Hi, good morning and good afternoon everybody. Hope all is well. Um, so this video is part one of a step-by-step -step, hands on guide uh, on Azure Web Application Firewall or WAF for short. Um, so it covers the following. Um, so we will look into uh, the, the WAF solution from Azure offering uh, and perform the provisioning of the, the solution together with uh, configuration and testing. Um, we'll also look at the, the firewall rule sets and create our own custom rules. Uh, also turn on login and diagnostics too. So this is part one of the video. Part two of this video uh, to be released shortly covers the, the WAF logging and diagnostics piece um, using the application gateway um, analytics and, and log analytics. Um, so would appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel um, to receive further updates and new weekly videos uh, are posted. Um, so I'll give you a second to do this now, um, then we can take a look at the, the overview diagram and quick uh, WAF introduction of the solution to get started. Thanks guys. So hit the, the subscribe buttons in the uh, description or on the bottom right hand screen. Thanks. So if we take a look at the diagram, so we have a, a single virtual network in Azure uh, with two subnets. Uh, one subnet is dedicated to a uh, web application firewall. This is where you provision the WAF and, and this needs to be dedicated with no other services within this subnet. Uh, the other is our front end subnet, which shows uh, our VMs, uh, server one and server two. Uh, so these these VMs run in Windows. Uh, they have IIS installed um, with a hosted website. The WAF uh, load balances over HTTP. Uh, so in the real world, we'd use HTTPS for security and new certificates, but this is just a test in this scenario. Uh, so the Web Application Firewall is part of the Azure Application Gateway. Um, so it provides uh, centralized protection um, of all your applications uh, from a common exploits uh, and vulnerabilities. So these vulnerabilities, they could be uh, SQL injection attacks, uh, they could be cross-side scripting attacks, um, other common attacks such as command injection, um, HTTP request uh, smuggling, HTTP response splitting, and remote file uh, inclusion. Uh, so all this protection um, and, and a lot of other stuff is, is all automatically built um, into the WAF uh, rule sets for protection against your web apps um, by Azure. And it, it just gives you peace of uh, mind really in, in this area. So that's the solution diagram and a quick intro on WAF. So let's take a look at the creation and configuration now. So all our resources are in uh, RG1, resource group one. So if we take a look at our virtual machines, we've got server 01 and server 02 here. So they've got IS installed with a web uh, site hosted. If we look at our virtual networks, VNet1, take a look at our subnets. We've got our front end subnet that contains our VMs and we've got our WAF subnet that contains our web application firewall. So if we type in the search bar application gateways, and then if we click add to add on new application gateway here, choose a resource group, in this case is RG1. If we choose our unique uh, name, then if we choose WAF V2 as the tier, and then the firewall mode, we, we want to choose prevention in this case. So we've got two modes here, detection and prevention. So detection, all it does is just monitor all the logs and all threat alerts. So it doesn't block anything. So prevention, we want to choose here to block intrusions and attacks 
uh, that rules the tech. So the attacker will receive a, a 403 unauthorized access exception, and then the connection will be closed. Um, so prevention uh, mode records such attacks also in the, the WAF logs. So it's important to note that the, the WAF firewall doesn't block incoming connections or requests when it's operating in detection mode. So we use prevention here for the full rule set to block common exploits uh, and vulnerabilities. Then if we select our VNet and our dedicated subnet, which only contains application gateways, which in this case is our WAF subnet. Okay, so we want to create a new public IP address here for our WAF. So we just enter a name there, click OK. And if we add a backend pool, and if we just leave the, the backends for now, we can add them in later. So the backends in this case is going to be our IS servers or server one and server two. So if we add a new routing rule now, type the routing name or the rule name, add our listener name. Choose our front end IP that we created earlier, which is public. And then we're using HTTP in this case to click add. So we need to add our back end targets as well, so or our back end pools. So if we choose our back end pool we created earlier, and then our HTTP settings here. So we want to use port 80 for HTTP. If we click add and add again, click next. And now if we click create to create the, the WAF. Okay, good. So that's our WAF now created. Um, so now we can see we've got a public address now assigned dedicated to our WAF. So if we have a look at the in, in the application gateway itself. We can see the subnet that this is on. We can see our public IP again. Look at the back end pool. So we need to add in now our server one and server two VMs, which are running IIS websites. So now once we've added in two, it will just automatically load balance between the two. So let's take a look at the config. Now then, so if we go to configuration, so we can see our tiers, we've got WAF uh, V2 and standard tier, so we're on WAF, WAF V2 at the minute. So as we can see, the difference between the two, standard and WAF V2, is if we choose standard, we don't get the uh, all the built-in rules to protect us against our vulnerabilities here. So these are the rules. Um, so basically, they're all enabled by default. You can disable some if you like, but we keep them all enabled for full protection. So we can see the back end health, server A1 and server A2, they're both healthy. So let's carry out some load balancer testing now. Um, so the application gateway is a layer seven uh, load balancer, which means it works only at the uh, with web traffic, HTTP, HTTPS, uh, WebSocket, and HTTP slash two. So, uh, so it supports capabilities such as uh, TLS termination, uh, cookie-based uh, session of uh, affinity, and round robin as well for low balancing traffic. So now if we copy the public address of the WAF, and then if we pop that in a browser, and 
and now we can see it load balancing using round robbing uh, between server A1 and server A2. So in this section, we'll explain um, how to use um, network security groups or NSGs for short uh, to completely lock down network access um, to the subnet that contains the 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 uh, the application for gateway or the the WAF. So if we take a look at the uh, the virtual networks we've got at the minute, so we've got VNet one take a look at each subnet. So on each subnet, we've got an NSG applied. So we take a look at the WAF subnet. We've got a network security group called WAF NSG. And then on the front end, we've got a network security group called front end NSG. So if we type NSGs in the search bar, can now take a look at these NSGs. So let's take a look at the WAF one first. So at the top, we have a rule which allows Azure to communicate with the WAF uh, to determine the health of the backends. So for WAF version two, uh, we need to open port 65200 to 65535 to allow this. So according to Microsoft, these are secure and protected lockdown by Azure certificates in their documentation. So the next rule will allow uh, the load balancer to probe um, the load balancer's own backend pool uh, and will deny all other traffic to the uh, WAF subnet. So without this uh, load balancer rule, the client could not uh, connect to the WAF. So there are default rules to allow uh, a load balancer probe. It is a priority of uh, 65001, you can see there on the list. But we'll be putting this rule in at uh, 110 uh, to prevent all connections overriding the 65000 rule uh, that allows everything from the virtual network. So uh, this would include all subnets in the virtual network and all peered virtual networks as well. And then rule 120 allows port 80 from the internet to the WAF subnet. And then finally, we will override the default NSG rules that allows all communication to the subnet uh, from all other subnets in the same VNet or peered VNet. So it's a deny rule, uh, and this rule should have the lowest possible uh, user-defined priority, which is 4096. So if we take a look at the outbound security rules, these are all left as default in this solution. And then the front end is also just a standard NSG rules, all just left by default as well for incoming and outbound as well. So it's important to note that, you know, with, with any solution, um, you know, these firewall rule sets could be def different from your environment. So we'd recommend these are configured correctly and verified uh, for your solution. So this part of the video shows how we migrate from a, a WAF config we have here to a full WAF policy. So why do we want to do this? So basically it unlocks and enables us to uh, use custom rules, for example, where in this scenario we are unable to add any custom rules. So if we were just to create a new WAF policy without migrating, I've found that uh, we get an error along the lines of uh, cannot attach firewall policy since a former is not in sync um, with the web uh, or WAF configuration. I've found the best way, rather than trying to match policies, um, is to migrate using PowerShell, which we will do here now. So we migrate all the, the standard policies we've got currently to our new WAF policy. Now there is a, a PowerShell script um, to enable you to do this. Uh, I'll, I'll include this in the description, um, but basically we just need to run that script right now. So the script will ask for the subscription ID, which we have here. If we paste that in and then if we paste in the resource group, which is RG1. 
then the name of the current application gateway, and then the new name of the WAF policy. And then now we can see after the script is run, we get a, a message. Um, the, the WAF policy has been created, updated successfully and applied to the application gateway currently. And now if we go back and look at the config of our um, WAF firewall, we can see now um, we've got this section which points to the WAF policy we've now created, the new one. So if we look at the manage rules now, we can see that these all have been migrated. If we expand these all enabled. So these are all the rules that will, will apply. You can see our SQL injection rules there as well. We can see the associated application gateways. That we're pointing to. We can look at policy settings. Yep, yeah, we're in prevention mode, so this blocks intrusions and attacks uh, that the rules detect. So if we now create a custom rule, which we're now able to do, we can add a rule here to block an IP address. So if we put it priority 100, and then if we find what our IP address is, we find what our public address is here. So if we copy that, okay, so if we paste our public address here that we want to block, So we want to deny traffic and then if we click add and then save. So now we've got our block IP rule in place. If we now try and browse to the site with our public address. So now we get a forbidden message. So it's blocked that and that rule set is now in place. So what we want to do now is enable the diagnostic logging for part two of this video. So the next video part two will cover WAF logging and diagnostics using um, application gateway analytics, uh, also log analytics uh, and uh, running queries to search log data, uh, email alerting. So if we go to diagnostic settings to enable this, if we add a diagnostic setting, and then if we tick all the logs, the three logs there, and all metrics, and then send them to our log analytics workspace, if we type a name, and then click save. So that's the end of part one. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, so please subscribe for notifications when part two is released. Uh, so videos posted weekly uh, on Azure Cloud, uh, technical guides and certifications. Um, thanks for watching. Take care and see you in part two. Thank you.